Finding something to actually leverage the increased memory bandwidth of Radeon 7 is a bit of a challenge. Few games will genuinely use more memory than what's found on an RTX 2080, let alone the 16 gigabytes on Radeon 7. And most VRAM capacity utilization reporting is wildly inaccurate, as it only reports allocated memory, not necessarily the used memory. Some applications will allocate more than they ever use, for instance, and that's what Windows Task Manager or GPU-Z will show you. To best benchmark the potential advantages of Radeon 7, which would primarily be relegated to memory bandwidth, we set up targeted feature tests, still looking at gaming, to look at anti-aliasing and high-resolution benchmarks. Consider this an academic exercise on Radeon 7's capabilities. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake's Core P3 case. The Core P3 is one of the most unique cases on the market. It can serve as an open-air standing chassis, a test bench in vertical or horizontal orientation, or as a wall-mounted showcase PC. The Core P3 now comes with a 5mm thick tempered glass panel for its side, but keeps the front, top, and back open for air. The Core P3's versatility as a display piece, test bench, or standard desktop is reinforced by its price of roughly $110 on Amazon. You can learn more at the link in the description below. So as stated, academic exercise here, what that means is that we're going to be regularly exiting real-world use cases to just better look at how does the card scale? How does it scale versus an RTX 2080? It's totally irrelevant what the frame rate is ultimately at 8K resolution because you can't play at 8K with either device, so even with really low settings. So that's why we call this academic exercise. It's just it's, it's looking at what can happen uh, in scaling, but not necessarily what's usable for you. So what we're looking at here is some unplayable scenarios in a lot of cases, although some are playable. 8K resolutions included just to see if scaling improves over uh, AMD or NVIDIA. I mean, if we see, for example, a 10% difference where NVIDIA might hold a 10% lead in one particular test, maybe 4K, does that gap close? Does it become 0% or 3% if we switch to AMD at, say, uh, well, 8K resolution as, again, an example? So another thing we can do here is, in theory, test anti-aliasing. This is something that AMD indicated should be a bit advantaged on the Radeon card, and that makes sense, logically anyway. So if we change anti-aliasing where you take multiple samples per pixel, typically 2x, 4x, 8x, 16x, so forth, uh, or sometimes called tap to tap, uh, it could have a, a similar performance impact to just increasing the resolution. It's really the same idea. It hits the same part of the pipeline. So if AMD's memory bandwidth really benefits it in games, what we would hypothesize would happen would be a diminishing or reversing performance delta between the 2080 and Radeon 7 as that anti-aliasing increases, as we make it more difficult if we uh, increase the resolution, things like that. So we already demonstrated how the Radeon 7 card can sometimes close the gap at higher resolutions when we posted our review, and we talked about how the gap, like in F1 2018, would widen at 1080p, and we can show some of those charts again now, uh, though, of course, check the review for full detail. But looking through those charts again, at 4K, the gap is uh, a bit better in some of these games for Radeon, favoring Radeon, or at least minimizing the difference. And then you see again at 1440p, it starts to widen, but it's still reasonably favorable. At 1080p, that gap really starts to widen, where NVIDIA pulls ahead in a couple of the games we tested, and that's just because no longer is it the case that the HBM is really being leveraged in a way that's meaningful, because at 1080p, you're just not hitting the memory quite as hard as at 4K. So this is where we can start looking at other scenarios. Keep in mind that the obvious downside is we enter territory where the content is unplayable at the frame rate, so you might not really be able to do anything with this information, but at least it's interesting. We ran a few different types of tests with Unigen's Superposition. This is a great test for quick synthetic benchmarking and gives us a look at performance as it scales across resolutions. Starting with shaders set to low, textures set to high, and resolution changes at 4K, 5K, and 8K, we saw that NVIDIA held a lead of about 27.4% over baseline, moving to 27.9% lead with an error over baseline at 5K, and then a 28.1% lead at 8K. There's really no change here from 4K to 8K, at least with regard to scaling, although obviously these resolutions become decreasingly playable as they increase. 
We ran a one-off test next with extreme shaders instead, finding that AMD actually gained ground in this scenario in a pretty significant way. AMD operated at 1566 points on average with Nvidia at 1504 points. We reran this test four times and averaged it, determining that this delta is outside of standard deviation between those test passes, so it is a meaningful difference. After learning that bigger differences emerge with extreme shaders, we reran the tests from 1080p to 4K. At 1080p, Nvidia's RTX 2080 performed about 25.8% better than the Radeon 7 guard with a 100% baseline there. At 1440p, the RTX 2080's advantage rapidly decayed to 16.1%. 4K results are too close and create kind of a messy chart, so sorry about that, but the RTX 2080 ends up actually outperformed by Radeon 7 here for the first time in all of these tests. With Radeon 7 holding a couple percentage point lead, we can see that as resolution scales with this particular game using the extreme shaders, which are pretty compute intensive in this benchmark, it looks like AMD does change performance in a meaningful way. So in terms of real frame rate, the benchmark was operating at about 11 to 12 FPS average. Clearly this isn't play, it's not even a game, but if it were, it's not playable anyway. And that advantage is really not realized since no one would realistically use these settings in a game. But it is interesting to see how two cards can flip positions in different testing scenarios. And it gives us a bit of insight as to how Radeon 7 works and what it does well. And this sort of confirms some things we already knew, which is that memory bandwidth does matter as you increase the memory, uh, the load on the memory buses, memory pipe, and also teaches us or reminds us that AMD does well in compute scenarios. Firestrike remains one of the best tools for this type of synthetic workload. For this, we'll be looking at GT1 and GT2 separately. GT1 heavily loads the GPU with polygons and tessellation, performs its shadow and illumination crunching, and uses compute shaders for post-processing and particle physics and simulation. GT2 is very heavy on compute shader workload and greatly increases pixels processed per frame, but reduces tessellation workload by more than 50%. GT2 should therefore run better on Radeon 7 than GT1 would, relative to the RTX 2080 FE. So this is where it's really important to understand what the benchmark's doing and not just run it blindly. Because if we understand those two differences, we can look specifically at the two workloads and try and, try and analyze where would one card theoretically do better than the other. Starting with GT2, we see that the stock Firestrike Ultra settings have Nvidia below AMD's performance at 86.7% of the baseline Radeon 7 100% performance. This is unique to this benchmark thus far. At 2x MSAA, that gap shrinks to 90.7% of baseline performance. 4x MSAA brings us to 94.6% of baseline, with 8x MSAA finally allowing the RTX 2080 to surpass AMD and hold at 104.7% of baseline performance. It makes sense that AMD would generally be more competitive in GT2 where compute workload and memory bandwidth are both stressed. As for why NVIDIA starts to pull ahead once MSAA is brought to 8x, we're working with 3 d Mark's team and others to try and better understand the specific behavior that we're seeing here. Our estimation is that this may have to do with memory compression technology on NVIDIA, or maybe edge detection and anti-aliasing with this specific hardware and software combination, the software implementation especially. So there may be implementation level advantages here, uh, but we're working with the teams to try and better understand them. For GT1, getting that chart on the screen, there's more tessellation and polygons are a bit heavier here. So we see the two cards start to functionally equal each other under stock Firestrike Ultra settings, with Nvidia gaining a notable 16% lead at 2x MSAA, 21% lead at 4x MSAA, and 27% at 8x MSAA. And then we'll also note that there was a massive difference between Radeon 7 and the 2080 FE when running 8K resolution with 8X MSAA. Now, as a percentage, this difference looks like uh, something like 60% favoring the Radeon card. However, in reality, you're talking about something like 4 point something FPS versus 1 point something FPS. So it is clearly unplayable on both. However, very interesting to look at the differences. The reason this particular difference emerges is because we were running out of memory on the NVIDIA card. So in order to exhaust properly, truly exhaust that eight gigabyte frame buffer, we had to run at 8K resolution with eight tap multi-sample anti-aliasing. That's a lot of pixels. And, uh, and that's what it took to exhaust the, uh, 
frame buffer, at which point AMD was able to produce a significantly higher FPS when looking at percentages, uh, but in reality it's a 3 FPS difference and it's still unplayable. It's just that that's where you start seeing that deviation of capacity versus brute force in other ways. So interesting data, but not particularly useful considering how unplayable it is anyway. GTA 5 has a lot of anti-aliasing options, so we'll exercise both MSAA from 2x to 8x and then the Reflections MSAA at 8x. We'll start this with just using an average FPS chart at the different settings, which will best illustrate how the gap changes between each test. At 4K and very high in ultra settings for everything, 2x MSAA puts us at 58.8 FPS average for the 2080 and 51.4 for the Radeon 7 card. The more important indicator is that the 2080 holds a 14.4% lead over the Radeon 7 card, at 4x MSAA, that lead doesn't really change much and scales down to 14.1%, and it's pretty close to error at that point. At 8x MSAA, we start to see some movement, and the average FPS of 27.5 on Radeon 7 versus 31 FPS on RTX 2080 shows that the improvement for the RTX 2080 defrays down to 13%, down from an initial 14.4%. By then also adding 8x MSAA reflections in addition to the other AA, we see that the difference is now changing to a 10.8% advantage for the 2080 FE, which diminishes its benefit. Looking at the line graph in total, we can see that AMD does start recovering some losses toward the extreme end of the scale. It's just that, again, we're in unplayable territory for other reasons, but the gap does close. So this sort of reinforces that initial hypothesis from the review. That performance will be better at higher resolutions and heavier anti-aliasing. For reference, with the amount of test passes we ran, standard deviation run-to-run -run was about 0.3 FPS average, so these results are very accurate. Far Cry 5 is next. For this one, we tested with SMAA, TAA, and HD textures under different scenarios. Unfortunately, we can't really expand the anti-aliasing in any other way beyond these two. In the first test at 4K and using HD textures with SMAA, we measured NVIDIA at 62.8 FPS average and AMD at 60.6 .6 FPS average, putting NVIDIA as about 3.5% ahead with 1% lows similarly spaced as were 0.1% lows. To test scaling with different settings, we also ran a test with reduced VRAM consumption, but otherwise identical settings. We can switch to that chart now. The results disabling HD textures were functionally identical to the results with HD textures and nothing else changed. It's no surprise that we're within margin of error as textures don't really impact performance unless VRAM becomes a limitation. On both devices, quantitatively, the experience is unchanged from the previous chart. Qualitatively, the output is the same on each device. So one to the next, there's no visible difference if you're ignoring frame rate and things like that. Again, NVIDIA is about 3.3% faster in this test as well. Switching to TAA instead, performance falls off a little bit for each device, but NVIDIA still maintains a 3.3% advantage in average FPS. HD textures and anti-aliasing changes in Far Cry 5 aren't enough to reduce or change the performance delta from card to card. Closing out then, we see some interesting scaling in a few of these titles. Fire Strike's the most useful. It gives us the most, the clearest picture of what's happening and why because of, well, we know how Fire Strike is built. It's extremely well documented. So that one's interesting to look at. It's also potentially a bit useful to know that it required an 8K resolution with 8TAP MSAA to exhaust the frame buffer on the RTX 2080 FE and start to gain an advantage in a simulated gaming scenario, it's synthetic obviously, uh, with the Radeon card. Now again, uh, unplayable anyway at that point, but this might scale elsewhere and maybe it would be useful to you to know this information. So that's it for this one. As stated, it's an academic exercise. This is not particularly useful in the real world, but it's very interesting. And if you want actual performance numbers as it pertains to playing the game, we would of course advise you check out our review of the Radeon 7 card for more information. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. As always, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. And we'll see you all next time.